G'day guys and gal, Warhammer 40k has a lot of themes and subtle messages. One not so subtle message is the dangers of daddy issues and why that even supreme demigod immortals need a hug and positive reinforcement from time to time. The Emperor's parenting skills can be described as a, uh, inconsistent. At times he seemed like an amazing dad, understanding his son's needs and how to bring them into his vision for the galaxy, no matter how violent and oppressive that vision may be. Yet at other times it seems like he dropped his chromosomes, neglected and outright screwing over some of his sons for no apparent reason beyond him being a bit of an asshole. This inconsistency has caused his Primarchs to have complicated opinions of him, ranging from respect and adoration all the way to burning hatred. Today we'll go over each of the Primarchs opinion of their father, the Emperor. For traitor Primarchs I'll only talk about their opinion until they became traitors because after that it just becomes a bunch of daddy doesn't love me so now I have to commit genocide. Ooh. Let's get into it. Kicking us off with the lion because not only is he the best Primarch but he is also the first because he's the best. All the other Primarchs had an element of the Emperor within them, however the Lion was a lot like his father in many ways. His gravitas and nobility were second to none other than maybe Sanguinius, yet he was cold and ruthless enough to get the job done. There's a reason why the Emperor allowed the Lion and the Dark Angels to have a bunch of cool forbidden ancient technology. They were the only legion that he trusted absolutely and I think that has a lot to do with how similar the Lion and the Emperor were. As such the Lion respected the shit out of the Emperor, his loyalty was absolute, with Kairos Fateweaver even being like, ah shit, when he approached the lion, intent on turning him to chaos but then realizing there was not a single future out of all the infinite ones he could see where the lion would turn to chaos then and there. Then Kairos got shanked by a big ass greatsword. The quote, loyalty is its own reward, literally comes from the lion. I know there's a lot of memes and theories calling the Dark Angels traitor and that the lion would have joined whichever side he saw as the inevitable victors, but that's bullshit. When the traitors were on terror and the Imperium seemed doomed, the lion went to nearly every single homeworld of each traitor Primarch and blew it up, meaning that if the traitors did win, the lion would be public enemy number one. As the lion is a pretty cold and calm dude, the most we ever see of his opinion of the Emperor is respect and loyalty, not the exaltation and literal cummy pants of some of the other Primarchs. Primarch 2 obviously had a fucking terrible relationship with the Emperor as not only is he dead, but he and his legion have been deleted from the annals of history. He must have taken the last slice of peri peri chicken pizza or something. Fulgrim was the definition of a simp when he met the Emperor, and he remained that way all the way until he betrayed the Imperium. Like when Horus was telling Fulgrim to join him and betray the Emperor, and it's also important to note here that Fulgrim was heavily influenced and corrupted by his demon sword by this point, Fulgrim started crying, wanted to kill Horus, and literally said word for word, all my life I wanted to be like him in regards to the Emperor. Then he turned traitor cause he's a fucking idiot. Until then though Fulgrim was a huge kiss ass, being extremely proud that his legion was called the Emperor's children and bearing the Imperial Aquila. You would have thought that he would be the hardest to turn traitor, but it's always the psycho clingy girlfriends who love you with all their heart that end up slashing your tires and leaving you threatening voicemails, so I think that applies really well to Fulgrim here. The fourth Primarch is Perturabo, who like Fulgrim, started off as a huge Empress simp. When Purdy met the Emperor, he was completely elated. It was the best moment of his entire life, as he realized that there was more to his existence and that he finally met his equals. See, Perta Rabo's Primarch powers were awesome, but also kind of sucked. He instantly understood everything he saw, hence there was no joy of discovery or challenge. His life was just way too easy. On top of that, he was always able to see the Eye of Terror, which made him super paranoid, as it would. However, when he met the Emperor, he felt that childlike joy, and even the Eye of Terror shrank away and was hidden from sight in the presence of the legendary Emperor of Mankind. However, after that meeting, Perturabo's opinion of the Emperor would slowly but surely diminish. He never complained, hence always accepted the Emperor's orders to head to the most grueling and vicious sieges. His sons died in droves, as he accepted his missions with grim determination. He believed he would eventually receive the praise and reward for such shit tasks, but instead, his opposite, Rogel Dawn, was the one chosen as the Praetorian of Terra, and given the love he believed he deserved. By the time Perturabo turned traitor, he was extremely bitter, but despite that, Horus still had to pull off some massive manipulation to finally bring him over the line. Such was his initial love for his father. 
The Khan is next, and he genuinely has the most common sense and reasonable opinion of the Emperor and the Imperium. He knows the Emperor is a bit of a tyrant and an asshole, with the Imperium also not being that great. However, he is also aware that humanity needs a bit of a tyrant and an asshole if it's going to unite and face the darkness the galaxy has to offer. That, plus he was aware that standing against the Emperor would result in his death, hence he was happy to fall in line. The Khan considers the Emperor as intelligent and his actions as necessary, reasonable and well thought out. He regrets that they weren't closer, but he doesn't blame the Emperor for abandoning the Great Crusade and keeping the reasons secret. When the heresy broke out, a lot of people, including the Emperor, thought the Khan would turn traitor. However, when the Khan figured out what the fuck was going on, he was like, Hmm, who do I join? My absent father who has united humanity and drives us towards a golden age? Or a bunch of demonic rapists who want to genocide everyone? Hmm, really tough pick on that one, mate. The Khan's common sense way of thinking is one of the biggest reasons why he is so underrated. But overall, his relationship with the Emperor was very distant and had little emotion. But despite that, the Khan placed a lot of trust in the Emperor and his vision. Lehman thought the Emperor was the best thing since fairy porn. Their meeting, when the Emperor lost an eating and drinking contest to the Wolf King before knocking his ass out cold, was a huge highlight for Lehman. He dutifully followed his assignment as the Emperor's executioner, following his father's orders without debate or complaint. Russ also had a close relationship with Malkador, who was like the Primarch's uncle. Considering half the Primarchs hated Malkador and a few of them had literally tried to kill him, that means a fair amount. Lehman's a bit like an orc. He respects strength and nobody is stronger than the Emperor. But despite that, Lehman never came across as an Emperor simp like Fulgrim did. He trusted and respected the Emperor, accepting that Daddy knows best, but he didn't burst into tears while jacking off every time the Emperor needed him to go fuck someone up. Rogel Dawn is in a bit of a similar boat to Lehman. Rogel isn't a super emotional guy, but he is very practical. He joined the Emperor and enacted his will because it was the most practical thing to do. That wasn't to say they didn't have a warm relationship. The Emperor placed a lot of trust and faith in Rogel, declaring him the Praetorian of Terra and giving him command of mankind's capital world. On the flip side, Rogel had a mental breakdown when the Emperor died and he was forced to carry his broken body to the Golden Throne. A mental breakdown which is partially to blame for the existence of the Black Templars. So their relationship was clearly deep and powerful yet subtle on the surface. Two professionals who were not overtly emotional having a connection that only really showed when one of them kicked the bucket. Saying Conrad Kurse wasn't the Emperor's number one fan is a bit of an understatement. When Conrad first saw the Emperor, he literally got a vision of his own death and he tried to claw his own eyes out. So uh, yeah, not the best first impression out there, but surprisingly not the worst out of all the Primarchs. Conrad also got more and more insane as time went on, so his genuine opinions can get hard to discern. Despite this, it's clear Conrad wished the Emperor never found him. He was content with his own little planet, ruling a society free of crime. Him being forced into a galactic conflict he didn't give a fuck about wasn't great for his sanity or mood. He also got enraged that he would get judged and censored for his legion's method of war, even though that is what he believed he was designed to do. But like I said, Conrad was batshit insane. By the time he died, he literally allowed an assassin cut his head off to prove a point that nobody really understood or even gave a fuck about, but yeah, he really didn't like his dad that much. Sangunius comes in next and he loved his father from day one. He wept when they first met, but not in the cringy way Fulgrim or Perturabo did. From there he trusted, respected and followed his father without question. When the Emperor would do something questionable or lie to his sons, the traders would be like, See, I told you, he lied, so now we need to genocide everyone. Whereas Sanguinius was like, Fathers lie to their sons to protect them. That does not mean he doesn't love them, nor does it mean he has betrayed them. I am hurt by the lie, but I know its intentions were pure. My faith in the Emperor remains strong. Which is a very healthy and well-adjusted way to go about it in my opinion. Sanguinius's faith in the Emperor would last until he drew his final breath, proving once again that Hawkboy is the second best Primarch, behind the line of course. Primarch Ten is Ferris, who had a very strong and familiar bond with the Emperor, often accompanying him on various conquests and even sharing some solid banter with him. This probably has a lot to do with Ferris's refusal to ever kiss ass, and only respects strength and prowess. As Ferris and the Emperor's meeting was like a literal Dragon Ball Z tier punch on, needless to say there was a lot of respect gained there. However, as Ferris got decapitated pretty early on in the Horus Heresy, and he doesn't really have a whole lot of lore leading up to that point, we don't get to see more of this positive relationship relationship explored as much. 
Primarch 11 could have liked the Emperor, but it's unlikely considering he was banished to the Shadow Realm and he doesn't even exist in even the most restricted of Imperial Archive. Angron fucking hates the Emperor. From day one, when the Emperor abducted Angron on the eve of battle from his warriors, leaving them to be slaughtered, the Primarch of the World Eaters has been enraged. This is the Emperor's fault. He could have deployed the World Eaters Legion to back up Angron, saving his warriors and tactfully unifying him with his Legion, but no, he chose the worst possible outcome. Even leaving Angron to die on the planet would have had a better net result. As such, Angron hated the Emperor the entire time he was serving him, and he continues to hate him to this very day. Next up is Gilliman, who held the Emperor in deep respect, seeing him as a legendary mentor and father figure, but the two never got as close as let's say Ferris did with the Emperor. He respected the Emperor's vision and ideals, but the two just didn't hang out much. The Emperor trusted Gilliman to do a good job, and Gilliman didn't need his daddy's hand three feet up his asshole to feel appreciated. When Gilliman returned from the dead in the current setting, he was shocked to see his father again in his new godlike form. He realized that the Emperor didn't really care about them as sons, but rather as tools. Despite his sadness at this realization, Gilliman still respects the Emperor's vision for humanity and continues to uphold it to this day. Mortarian is next, then boy oh boy did the Emperor and Morty not get along. First, because Morty stunk like shit, but mostly because on their first meeting, the Emperor mocked and goaded Morty into a suicide mission. When Morty failed and the Emperor had to intervene and save him, Morty developed a lot of resentment, seeing his father as having stolen his moment of glory. From there, despite the Emperor taking steps to appease Morty, such as banning psychers, Morty remained a salty little sausage. He compared the Emperor to his dead adoptive father, who was a Witch King Psyker Tyrant. Ironically, Morty would end up being a tyrannical Witch King Psyker, but Morty was always the biggest hypocrite out of all the Primarchs, so that's to be expected. Morty would let this resentment fester inside of him until he abandoned all his ideals and morals purely despite his father. The 15th is Magnus. Magnus and the Emperor had a special connection. Due to their war powers, they actually met psychically years before their physical meeting. Magnus adored his father and looked up to him, but was a bit of a naughty boy, ignoring his father's warnings about the dangers of the warp and continuing to use warp sorcery despite the Emperor outlawing it. It was Magnus' lack of discipline which would eventually ruin his shit, causing a boatload of damage to the Emperor and the Imperium as a whole. Despite numerous bad encounters with the Emperor, Magnus always loved him as a father, nearly rejoining the Loyalist side deep into the Horus Heresy. Next up is Horus. Nunmer is close to the Emperor's Horus. He was officially the first Primarch to be found, but was actually the second, and fought in countless wars and campaigns with the Emperor, usually side by side. He loved, adored, respected, admired, and performed self-molestation all in the Emperor's name. The other Primarchs were jealous of how close the two were, with the Emperor even granting Horus the role of War Master. In hindsight, that was a massive fuck up, but retrospect is a beautiful thing. Horus' opinion of the Emperor would dampen when the Emperor apparently abandoned the Great Crusade, allowing dark forces to manipulate Horus into eventually selling his soul to chaos and causing the biggest ruckus the galaxy had seen in over 60 million years. It's important to note that even up until the moment Horus was kind of forced to turn his back on the Emperor, he still held a lot of positive views of him. Now onto Lorgar. Nobody wanted to suck and fuck the Emperor more than Lorgar did. Not even Fulgrim. Lorgar saw the Emperor as his literal god, and he worshipped him as such. The Emperor's humble attempts at trying to get Lorgar to chill the fuck out only increased Lorgar's adoration of him. It was only until the Emperor blew up Lorgar's favourite city, psychically mind-raped his entire legion, and completely and utterly humiliated Lorgar, did Lorgar go, wait a minute, fuck this guy, before proceeding to help instigate the Horus Heresy. He went from the Emperor's number one fan to the Emperor's greatest enemy within a short span of time, showing once again that the Emperor is a bit of a shitty dad. Vulcan and the Emperor were close. The Emperor adored Vulcan, seeing him as the only Primarch that was truly human and kind, which is why he trusted him to make the Talisman of Seven Hammers, a device that would activate if the Golden Throne was ever to fall and the Emperor to truly die. If this happened, then the Talisman would completely and utterly annihilate all of Terra, killing whatever foe was powerful enough to breach its defenses. Some might call it a bit of a sore loser move, but I appreciate a good contingency plan. The Emperor and Vulcan's mutual respect and love would never fail. Corvus Korax is 19th, 
and whilst he and the Emperor's interactions were limited, they had a powerful sense of respect for one another. Unlike Mortarion and Angron, the Emperor handled Corvus's delicate situation upon meeting with a lot more intelligence and tact. Corvus had a bunch of nukes that he could use to win the war and take over his planet, but he would have to kill a lot of people. The Emperor and he spoke, and then the Emperor left Corvus to make the decision. Corvus ended up using the nukes and winning the war, joining the Emperor's crusade soon after. The Emperor allowing Corvus to make his own decision gave Corvus a huge sense of respect for the Emperor. This bond would continue as the Emperor would tell Corvus secrets he wouldn't share with the other Primarchs, whilst also giving Corvus fancy weapons and tech, similar to how he gave the Lion the Dark Age of Technology weapons. As such, despite Corvus not being huge on the amount of war, suffering and genocide that occurred during the Great Crusade, he understood and trusted his father's judgement and vision. The way the Emperor dealt with Corvus is how he should have dealt with Mortarion and Angron. It would have saved him one smelly piece of shit moth and one extremely loud headache. And finally, Alpharius. Thanks to the most recent Alpharius novel, which I haven't yet read, we got to see a lot of insights into Alpharius and his thought processes. Hence the usual meme of Alpharius and Alpharius thought Alpharius of the Emperor is no longer valid or particularly funny. Alpharius was found first at an early age, hence he was literally raised by the Emperor in Malkador, giving him a very unique relationship with his father. The Emperor placed a lot of trust in him, telling him to infiltrate every single legion and tasking him with the sole goal of preventing the fall of the Imperium no matter the cost. Obviously Alpharius has an interesting way of interpreting orders, as the Alpha Legion are in the most part a bunch of fucking heretics, but Alpharius and his father had a good relationship for the most part. So as bad as the father of the Big E might have been, up until the heresy, the Emperor maintained good relationships with the vast majority of his sons. If only he didn't shit in Lorgar's breakfast, that might have been enough. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. We're only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of... It's pretty cheeky hentai. With more on the way. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more daddy-issued content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.